there is an alchemy that goes into making any television show, which is really hard to capture. I mean, we, you know, I, while we did our part to write the show uh, as well as we could, the show would have never been successful if we hadn't been fortunate to have the incredible cast we had delivering the lines. You know, I used to have much more of a, uh, of a feeling that, you know, if you write something good, you know, it works. But, you know, I'm, I'm much humbler now. You really need good actors who can say things with conviction, and particularly in Lost where they were having to say a lot of crazy shit. They had to say it with conviction and sell it. And so, you know, it was an amazing cast. It was, the show kind of was at the right time in the right place and hit the zeitgeist in the right way. And I think sometimes, you know, shows try for that and they don't quite get there. Um, I also think that, you know, we ultimately spent a lot of time in the writer's room talking about the characters. And, you know, I think that if you make a show that's just about the mythology, then the audience will only be invested in the mythology. And I think at the core, at the bottom line, people watch television for the people. They, you know, there were as many people who were interested in, you know, will Kate hook up with Sawyer or Jack in the end, as they were about, was the smoke monster a cloud of nanobots? <laughs> Which it wasn't. I don't get asked a lot of questions per se. I think I, you know, a lot of people come up and really um, express their appreciation and sort of say, I really love the show. I really, it meant a lot to me. Uh, you know, a lot of people still are discovering the show because now you can watch television. Like, you know, you can, you can pick up a television series whenever, just like a novel. And it's really wonderful when people come up and say, hey, I just finished watching it and I really enjoy it. And, um, you know, I get, I get a lot of positive feedback, which is wonderful. I love it when people come up and say that they like the show. Um, I don't, I, you know, I, you might expect people would come up and say, oh, I hated the ending or I didn't like the show, but no, not really. Those people I don't think, you know, bother. Sometimes people have, you know, odd questions like, uh, who was the dude Saeed shot on the golf course? Who are the people in the outrigger? You know, stuff like that, which I don't answer. The creative process is always an evolving one, and I think that anybody who says they've got something worked out ahead of time isn't being truthful. And certainly, you know, Stephen King, who was a big role model for myself um, and Damon, was very candid about how he works his stuff out as he's going along. We had pieces of it, and as over time we got more pieces, and as we got closer to the ending we had more pieces, and by the time we wrote the finale we had all the pieces that we wanted. But you know, the, the creative evolution is one that, um, you know, it's an evolution and that's what happens. You basically, we had certain set ideas very early, like, um, you know, this show opened with Jack's eye opening and was going to end with Jack's eye closing. We knew relatively early on that, you know, Hurley would be the guy who we would sort of, you know, leave in charge. And, you know, there were various elements came together at various times, but we had a, um, you know, it was, you, the more you think about something, the more you work on something, the more ideas that come up. And some of those ideas replace ideas you had before. And so while we had a plan, we also had a lot of room for creative discovery to enter into that plan. I don't really have any regrets about the show. I mean, I, I think we got to tell the story we wanted to tell. I mean, you know, obviously looming, you know, out there is this for some people, is a sense that oh, the you know the finale was disappointing, but the um, you know the truth is there are a lot of people who like the finale. The truth is the finale was nominated for an Emmy for writing, one of five episodes out of every drama on television to be selected. So I guess the show resonated for our peers, and I think there is a vociferous group of people out there who didn't like it, who make a lot of noise, but. There was no version of the ending of the show that would have pleased everybody, and I knew that, and I accepted that, and I made my peace with that. And I feel very fortunate and happy that we wrote the show from beginning to end the way we wanted to write it. I mean, we certainly had bigger plans for Mr. Echo, but Adewale Akinue Abaje, the actor, didn't really want to be on the show, didn't really like living in Hawaii, so we were really forced to truncate his story. and. Um, you know, it's too bad, but, you know, out of those things come good things. And I think the 
Um, the fact that Mr. Echo made an early exit actually gave more room for Ben's character to, to expand in the show, and I think that was good in the long run. You know, television shows are very organic things, and you kind of listen to the show, you see what actors do, and I think you kind of follow the show where it leads you. You kind of guide it somewhat as a writer, but you also follow it. And in the case of, um, you know, in the case of Lost, I think we ended up kind of in the, sort of in hindsight, you look back and go, oh, that worked out great. I don't think it's my job to interpret the ending of the show or the show for anybody. I mean, I wouldn't want to feel like if I read a novel that someone was going to tell me I misinterpreted it. I hope that any good story is subject to interpretation and that you kind of derive your own meaning from it. So if it works for you to decide that they were, you know, all dead all the time and that's how you want to interpret the show, that's totally fine. I mean, I think, again, any sort of piece of literature or art or, uh, you know, should be, it kind of moves from the possession of the author into the possession of the audience and they're allowed to have their own experience with it. And, I, and that, I think, is one of the main reasons that Damon and I haven't really spent a lot of time after the show saying, well, this is this, this was that, we're answering these questions, we're trying to fill in these gaps. You know, we want the show to stand on its own and allow people the kind of freedom to experience it on their own terms. Disney owns the franchise. It made them a lot of money. It's just hard to imagine that it will just sit there idly forever. I mean, you know, Damon and I told our story in that world, and I assume that someone will come along and, you know, having been inspired, hopefully, by our version of the story and decide they want to tell their own version. I mean, it's like the Narnia Chronicles. You know, there, there are seven books. In that case, they were all written by C.S. Lewis, but they visit Narnia at different times and in different configurations and in different ways. Someone is going to come up with a way to, you know, tell another law story. I, I, I think it's inevitable. I, I don't know what that is or how that would work, but I, I can't imagine that eventually something else won't be done with the franchise. We told an incredibly complicated, serialized story and we proved that television doesn't have to be lowest common denominator, that, we, that people would engage in a really serialized story. Um, I, it was sort of the first television show that collided with social media and we just happened to come along at this incredible confluence of events. We were telling a very complicated, intentionally ambiguous story at the same time social media came into existence and the show was something that people could discuss over social media and so it was really it, you know it I, I, I would hope that in some way we were able to influence storytelling on television that particularly in the network television in 2004 10 years ago I mean the idea that you could have main characters that had done really horrible things like murder people the idea that you could have a large and sprawling cast of 16 series regulars that you could have as I said, sort of intentional ambiguity be very much a part of the way you tell stories, that you could have an incredibly complicated mythology that required people to lean forward and really engage in. Those were all things that, in the traditional wisdom of network television, were considered show killers. And those were all the things, in fact, that people responded to on the show because that's, those were the very things that made Lost different. Those were the very things that made it you know, sort of special and unique. And I, I think that that kind of if, if in some way we proved that the audience was, was more sophisticated and more able to grasp and appreciate complex storytelling, I, I, that would be a great accomplishment.